Hey everybody, here's a quick run through of our awesome vacation that me and Kitty just got back from. There's a whole lot of photos, so I just kind of tossed them into a big video so you guys can check them all out. When we first landed in Bangkok, we got to stay at this awesome place that we met through couch surfing that was run by this cool Israeli guy who's turning this big old six story building into a fun bar slash overstay slash recording studio. And we got to stay there for super cheap since it was still being built. Then during our first day there, we went around to different watts around Bangkok and saw the giant golden palace. And we also saw the gigantic golden Buddha. Next, we hopped on an overnight bus going down to the south of Thailand to a little island called Koh Tao. The bus was nice, but the boat ride to the actual island consisted of a three hour scream vomiting, everyone's throwing up nightmare tour across the sea. So that was not very fun. But eventually we made it to the beach and it was beautiful and we signed up for scuba classes and we got to check out all the awesome fish. Our favorite were probably the parrot fish, which are the bright rainbow colored ones that would swim around and eat chunks of coral from the bottom with their weird teeth. We also got to see some puffer fish, stingrays, and as we found out later, an extremely poisonous scorpion fish. I also liked these squishy things that were on the bottom that would all retract and tense up when you got near them. And the tiny little things pulling inside are Christmas tree worms. We got to stay in amazing bungalows, though sometimes spider and rooster filled, and ate unbelievable food the entire time. One day we rented some motorbikes for about six bucks, and Kitty did not like them at all, especially because the first day, on her very first attempt ever driving a motorbike, I decided that we should drive up and over a mountain in the middle of the island. We took a remarkably pleasant boat back to the mainland and then started out to go to explore Cambodia. Our first stop was Siem Reap, which featured Angkor Wat, which, after visiting so many wats in Thailand, I thought it might be kind of boring, but Angkor Wat was amazing. It was like a huge, giant stone city that you could crawl around in and was completely abandoned. It was kind of like if the city museum in St. Louis was miles across and thousands of years old. We rode bikes to Angkor Wat, which allowed us to fully explore the whole place and really have a great time. Though one day we did get a little lost in the woods, which was kind of scary because there's still apparently mines left over from when the Khmer Rouge was in power in Cambodia, hidden about the forest. We stopped over briefly in Phnom Penh, which was kind of lame and very depressing. So we managed to get a bus to drop us off in the middle of a very tiny village in the middle of the Cardamom Mountains in Cambodia. There we once again met some super nice Israeli guys who personally drove us in their jeep up the river to an even smaller village called Chipat. In Chipat we chartered a cook and a guide to go exploring the jungle with for three days. On this trek, we got to wake up to birds and gibbons screaming in the trees, but unfortunately didn't really get to see any. Except, of course, for the Malayan pit viper that Kitty happened to step on. Especially since, in the words of our guide, the snake always bit bit, and when he bit, the hand, the arm, break, and then gave the chopping motion to show that the arms or legs would have to be removed after uh, the snake bit you. So that was a relief. Next, we jaunted over to Krong Kokong, which is a little border town on the edge of Cambodia that is filled with prostitutes and psychopaths, as we came to find out. Uh, but it also featured the best burger place that we've probably ever eaten at, especially in Asia, Mick Kong. Here I also traveled solo to Safari World to check out the orangutan boxing matches that were heavily advertised throughout the town. Kitty decided not to come, but it was way more amazing than I could have ever thought. These orangutans were geniuses. They could do everything that the Three Stooges were ever capable of, but, you know, only about a fifth of the brain power.
Plus, they fit perfectly into Walmart size kids Halloween costumes, which was just a bonus to be able to see Grumpy Batman or Super Orangutan go wheeling across the stage. Sadly, all of the female orangutans were exploited more so for their sexuality than their actual intellect. So, whoops, there goes her skirt. And check out the strip tease that they decided to teach her. Afterwards, of course, all of the men in the audience got to come up and stuff real American dollar bills into her tiny little undergarments. It wasn't all just monkey sexploitation. There was, of course, the main event, the orangutan boxing, which did feature plenty of sexy monkeys. The plot comprising the overall orangutan boxing match was a pulsating yet delicate ballet blending action, intrigue, and general monkey antics. And how's this for a trick ending? When the red orangutan comes up from underneath to defeat Blue, the medic orangutan goes to the ring to see if Blue is alright. But then, the trainer notices that the medic orangutan had hidden a gun inside of his medicine pouch in order to assassinate the red orangutan. The trainer snags the gun from the orangutan and shoots the would-be assassin medic orangutan. All of this was so unbelievable that I only managed to snap this one crappy picture. But that's what happened! Upon leaving Cambodia, we met a man who was seemingly nice at first, but would later prove to be quite psychotic. The guy wanted to show that he could do anything he wanted in Asia, and so managed to rent his own tuk-tuk and offered us a ride. This was a bad idea on our part, but we managed to get through and escape into Thailand. We wanted to head back to the beach after all the trauma and went to an island called Ko Chang. We rented a kayak and rode out to an unexplored island, took a Thai cooking class, and then I met some Swedish friends and we hung out listening to some Thai covers of popular songs. Including the mandatory cover of Hotel California. We also got the chance to take some elephants on a quick trip through the jungle. The elephant trainer got to snap a few photos of us and also took this opportunity to snap a few uh, MySpace style photos of himself. The next day, me and the Swedish buddies set off to hike through the jungle while Kitty relaxed on the beach. We snuck through the woods for about an hour to avoid the 400 baht toll at the main entrance road to the park and eventually we found the gorgeous waterfall. But when I was swimming back underwater from the waterfall to get my camera, I happened to open my eyes and see a two meter long snake come flying right at my face. Oh shit! Oh shit! Look at that fucker! <laughs> I freaked out, swam away, and pulled up to a big rock that we had originally jumped off. So then I was vigorously trying to wave at the Swedish friends to get them to try to come and get out of the horrible snake pit. But the waterfall drowned out any of my words and they just sat there posing as if I was taking pictures of them. So I did the brave and pretty stupid thing of jumping back in to warn them of the snake. Right when I was telling them about the snake, Bilu, the one who most afraid of snakes, happened to look down at his feet right when the snake was wiggling and winding its way between his legs. He freaked out, jumped and swam across the 10 meter expanse of open water in about two seconds. Waterfall, you, let's leave, there's a giant snake, he went back in the rock, let's leave. After we took his lead and swam off, the snake started following us in the water, so I managed to get all of these videos, which is cool now, but Scary as hell during Dude, he it. He will kill you. Yeah, he probably will. I saw the fishes over here. We Fortunately, this was the last horrible poisonous snake attack of the entire vacation. Afterwards, me and the Swedish guys climbed up the waterfall and then through the jungle some more to reach the highest point in the middle of the island. We spent the last few bits of our vacation relaxing, getting a little more shopping done in Bangkok, and admiring the king of Thailand. 
And when we finally made it back to China, we got to catch just a brief glimpse of the amazing Chinese crowds that we managed to miss by taking our vacation in Thailand and Cambodia. The end.